You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, November the 10th, and this is your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us this week, sitting in for Eric, is Keith Newmeyer. Many of you know Keith Newmeyer. He is the CEO of First Majestic Silver, which is one of the largest primary silver miners you're going to find. He's also chairman of First Mining Finance. And it is a pleasure and to speak with him, and it's great to have him sit in. Thank you very much for joining us, Keith. Well, Craig, it's always a pleasure, and I'm sure Eric's having a great time in Australia. Yes, he's down there. I don't even know what time it is where he is. And, and we thought, well, let's see. Let's see who we could find to sit in for you. Uh, they recommended at Sprott that I track down Keith Newmeyer, and, and here you are. So thank you so much. And before we get started, just to remind everybody, uh, Sprott Money does uh, have the perfect gifts for your loved ones this holiday season. Our holiday catalog is now available. You can find it online at SprottMoney.com. Uh, Eric, or Eric, see, I look at that. I'm already screwing this up. <laughs> uh, I just got to have it, I guess, Keith. All right, Keith, yeah. uh, I, here's where I want to talk to you about some silver specific, some commodity specific stuff as we uh, as we go forward. Uh, to begin with, though, silver is up only about 7% year to date versus gold, which is up almost twice as much, something more like 11 or 12%. Uh, how do you feel about the performance of silver so far this year? And, and uh, do you expect better things uh, next year? Well, it's a great time for people to be buying silver as a Christmas gift, I can tell you that. You know, silver prices, I think, are shockingly um, low. Um, They've been very stable. You you know, you say they're up 7%, but, you know, when you look at other commodities like zinc, for example, or lead, copper even, um, uh, all the base metals, and and then some of the battery metals, of course, you know, nickel, cobalt, lithium and so on you know they, a lot of these metals have been on an absolute terror and gold and silver is being left behind and, and now we've seen oil start to move just in the last few weeks and it's just, the precious metals just seem to be you know uh, in this very very tight trading range and i think they're just getting ready to run but it, it is a little bit um, interesting to watch this current market Let's talk about those general commodities for a second i spoke with a, a guy you may know yesterday by the name of Mickey Fulp and uh, Mickey was talking in his long experience that commodities in general run in cycles, kind of long 25-year cycles with kind of four- to five-year mini-cycles in between. And he's thinking that commodities in general have bottomed out from this latest bear market maybe that begun began in 2012. Um, you've been at this a long time too, Keith. Is that how you see it too? Do you think uh, these commodities in general have turned? Oh, for sure. You know, when you see zinc, you know, going up almost three times and – lead doubling and then copper going up 50%. You know, these, these are big, big moves. And it's just telling you what's going on in the world. You know, they, the, the miners are producing less metal today than they did three or four years ago. And, you know, obviously me, you know, being an expert in the silver space, the silver miners are producing substantially less silver today, including First Majestic. You know, we, we've had four or five years of difficult uh, price. Uh, we, you know, we're, our cost per ounce uh, back in, 2011, 2012 was in the low $20 range, but, you know, with silver, you know, north of 30, north of 40 for, you know, a good couple of years, it didn't really matter. We were making all kinds of money. But then when silver broke through $20 back in 2014, it became pretty desperate situation. And we had to really wind back the business and, and start to focus on preserving capital and cutting our costs. And you know, today our costs are 50% lower than they were back then, and, um, and but it's really had a, an effect on production. You know, so we're seeing lower production of all metals on a global scale, including silver, and, and eventually that's going to affect price, and I think we're starting to see that happen. Has it been your experience in the past? Uh, a kind of a rising tide lifts all boats? Do, do the precious metals like gold and silver kind of lead the commodity charge? Do they kind of tag along? Uh, and get dragged higher by the com- rising commodities? How does it, has it generally worked a certain way in the past? You know, it, I, I don't think there's a direct correlation. I remember, you know, in 2002, 2003, you know, gold definitely took off first and, you know, oil and uranium were quite late. You know, they, they, they were about five years later. Uh, silver was lagged by two to three years. Um, you know, when I fr- put, put First Majestic together, silver was at $5 and it broke through $10 in 2010. So, you know, that was, uh, what's, uh, uh, you know, seven years later. 
So, you know, silver definitely um, uh, followed gold, but gold was the lead, and, and uh, it normally is. And that's what's interesting about this current market. I'm not sure if it's, you know, Bitcoin-related or cryptocurrency-related. You know, there's a lot of money going going into that space. And I think that possibly, and, you know, we'll never know, but I think, you know, gold is being left behind to some degree, you know, because of the cryptos. Interesting thought, too. Uh, and I want to ask you, you touched upon this idea of falling supply, falling, uh, I guess, ore grades. We're seeing that a lot. We're seeing uh, just general supply get uh, uh, tighter and tighter from the miners. Some think that that may lead to some M&A activity in the months ahead, in the years ahead, just simply as the, the seniors, the large producers uh, run out of, of, of new mines and about the only thing they can do to get extra production is to buy up uh, juniors. Is, is that something that you think might be coming over the horizon too? Well, you know, uh, Eric's pretty familiar with this, you know, Kirkland, you know, uh, taking out uh, a new market, you know, they, the, you know, for sure, you know, these, you know, M and A is going to happen, you know, whether it's at, you know, current metal prices or, or, or whether the boards of directors need to see, Thirteen fifty or fifteen hundred dollar gold, it's going to happen, and that's why I put together, you know, first mining finance, of course. But um, you know, just going to the silver space for a second, you know, if you go back and look at silver production on a global basis in twenty fifteen, the miners globally produced eight hundred and fifty million ounces of silver. In twenty sixteen, that number was eight hundred million ounces, a drop of fifty million ounces. Uh, we're seeing now. Uh, some early numbers coming out of Australia, coming out of Mexico, um, that production's down quite dramatically, it appears. And particularly, you know, of course, Tahoe's offline as well, which is 20 million ounces. It looks like the estimate that's um, uh, circulating around the industry is that the miners globally produce 750 million ounces of silver uh, in, in 2017. We won't know the exact number for a few months, but that's a big drop. That's a 100 million ounce drop in production over a two year period. And if you're, you know, interested in this silver space, you know, you've got to be pretty concerned about that because it's, uh, you know, silver is a critical metal when it comes to all the things we want to do as a human race to go green and, you know, all the new battery technologies and, you know, electric vehicles and so on and so forth. Silver is an extremely necessary component and there's a lot of focus on nickel and cobalt and lithium and people are forgetting about the silver story completely. And I just saw an article this morning. It was one of the first articles I've seen. Um, there was uh, the Silver Institute met last week and there was uh, a reporter there uh, reporting on some of the supply demand fundamentals for silver and they actually had some bullish comments to make when making the uh, one of the Bloomberg strings that I read this morning. So, you know, people are maybe waking up to the fact that silver is a lot rarer than people think it is. Well, let me throw this out of the picture then for our, our, my last question for you. Uh, we talked a lot about supply and production, but gosh, what about demand? I saw a report this week that said in just the month of September alone, India imported 567 metric tons of silver. That brings their total year to date through the three quarters of the year to more than 4,000 metric tons. It's about 130 million ounces. Based off those numbers you gave us to what might come out of the ground in 2017, heck, India's already imported 20% of it just year to date. What do you make of that, Keith? Well, those are amazing numbers, and I quite frankly don't know where they're getting it, um, you know, because, you know, that's a lot of. Uh, buying uh, of a metal that is very thinly traded. If you look at the entire silver market, you know, if, if the miners are producing 750 million ounces a year, or make it 800, whatever the number is, it's going to be for 2017. You multiply that by 17 dollars an ounce. You know, it's it's basically a you know 16 billion dollar market. Uh, it's pretty shocking how small the silver market is, and and you get a buyer like that coming in. You know, what what's going to happen when Sony or or Apple or Tesla or, you know, or, or Samsung, you know, all of a sudden can't get access to silver and, and, and produce their products that they need to produce for the consumer. You know, it's going to be a major problem. And that's when you're going to see the headlines uh, talking about silver. And, you know, we could see silver go up two, three hundred percent quite easily, as we've seen zinc and all these other metals move in the last year. There's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought about that one before. You think back like to the robber baron days 100 years ago or 150 years ago, you know, where the the, uh, the oil company would buy the rail line and everything else that goes with it, right? 
maybe Apple or some other. Can we talk about uh, larger metal producers buying juniors? <laughs> I wonder if maybe we'll get to the point where uh, Apple or Tesla or somebody like that will actually just go buy their own silver. It's just buy the mine themselves. Well, we've seen Tesla buy lithium, and, and uh, you know we've been per- approached directly by an electronics manufacturer out of Asia, and we've also been approached directly from a very, very large um, um, jewelry manufacturer. So, you know, it could be happening because, you know, these end buyers, you'll see that there's risk to their supply. There you go. That, that's, that's, I had not thought of that before, but that's not surprising. I don't, you know, but that kind of just dawned on me this morning, and I think that's... Uh, that's certainly something interesting to consider as we go forward. Keith, hey, again, thank you so much for subbing in today. Uh, very valuable information. And uh, we might have to use you again sometime soon. That globe traveling Eric, you never know where he's going to be. Well, he's definitely had a lot of fun in his retirement. He's supposed to be relaxing, but I think he's working harder now than he probably ever has in his life. So, and that, and it, good, good for him. Yeah, that's what he would say too, no doubt about it. Well, thank you very much, Keith. Well, it's always a pleasure, Craig. To appreciate the opportunity. And from all of us here at Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com, thank you for listening. Be sure to check out the SprottMoney.com website on your way out. You'll notice that we now carry Scottsdale Mint products for folks here in the USA. You can order them right on our site, so please check us out. Uh, again, at SprottMoney.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend that commodities in general run in cycles, kind of long 25-year cycles with kind of four to five-year mini cycles in between. And he's thinking that commodities in general have bottomed out from this latest bear market, maybe that began began in 2012. Um, You've been at this a long time too, Keith. Is that how you see it too? Do you think uh, these commodities in general have turned? Oh, for sure. You know, when you see zinc, you know, going up almost three times and lead doubling and then copper going up 50 percent you know these these are big big moves and it's just telling you what's going on in the world you know the the, the miners are producing less metal today than they did three or four years ago and you know obviously me you know being an expert in the silver space the silver miners are producing substantially less silver today including first majestic you know we we've had four or five years of you're listening to the weekly wrap-up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, November the 10th, and this is your weekly wrap-up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us this week, sitting in for Eric, is Keith Newmeyer. Many of you know Keith Newmeyer. He is the CEO of First Majestic Silver, which is one of the largest primary silver miners you're going to find. He's also chairman of First Mining Finance. And it is a pleasure and to speak with him, and it's great to have him sit in. Thank you very much for joining us, Keith. Well, Craig, it's always a pleasure, and I'm sure Eric's having a great time in Australia. Yes, he's down there. I don't even know what time it is where he is. And, and we thought, well, let's see. Let's see who we could find to sit in for you. Uh, they recommended at Sprott that I track down Keith Newmeyer, and, and here you are. So thank you so much. And before we get started, just to remind everybody, uh, Sprott Money does – Uh, have the perfect gifts for your loved ones this holiday season. Our holiday catalog is now available. You can find it online at Uh, SprottMoney.com. Eric, see, look at that. I'm already screwing this up. (laughs) (laughs) I just got to have it, I guess, Keith. All right, Keith, uh, here's where I want to talk to you about some silver-specific, some commodity-specific stuff as we we go forward. Uh, To begin with, though, silver is up only about 7% year-to-date. Versus gold, which is up almost twice as much, something more like 11 or 12 percent. Uh, how do you feel about the performance of silver so far this year? And, and uh, do you expect better things uh, next year? Well, it's a great time for people to be buying silver for, as a Christmas gift. I can tell you that, you know, so silver price is difficult uh, price. Uh, we, you know, we're our cost per ounce uh, back in 2011, 2012 was in the low $20 range. But, you know, with silver, you know, north of 30, north of 40 for you know, a good couple of years, it didn't really matter. We were making all kinds of money. But then when silver broke through $20 back in 2014, it became pretty desperate situation. And we had to really wind back the business and, and start to focus on preserving capital and cutting our costs. And, you know, today our costs are 50% lower than they were back then. And, um, and But it's really had a, an effect on production. 
you know, so we're seeing lower production of all metals on a global scale, including silver, and, and eventually that's going to affect price, and I think we're starting to see that happen. Has it been your experience in the past, uh, a kind of a rise? I think are shockingly um, low. Um, they've been very stable. You, you know, you say they're up 7%, but you know, when you look at other commodities like zinc, for example, or lead, copper even, um, uh, all the base metals, and, any, and then some of the battery metals, of course, you know, nickel, cobalt, lithium, and so on. You know, they, a lot of these metals have been on an absolute terror, and gold and silver is being left behind. And, and now we've seen oil start to move just in the last few weeks, and it's just, the precious metals just seem to be, you know, uh, in this very, very tight trading range. And I think they're just getting ready to run, but it, it is a little bit um, interesting to watch this current market. Let's talk about those general commodities for a second. I spoke with a, a guy you may know yesterday by the name of Mickey Fulp, and uh, Mickey mm-hmm. was talking in his long experience.